Hi! In this video, I will show you how to make a spin laser like in the last video since it reached 2 likes. So let's get start. First, you want to go on the tab model and create a part. You need to take the part and you resize it to the size you want. Like that would be great. Then you duplicate it by clicking Ctrl and D at the same time. You want to resize the part to put it on the top of the other part. Like that. Then on the proper properties type tab, there will be the brick color. Here you can change the color of the brick to whatever you like. There are also the material. You can you can put ice, mud, or the neon, which is here, the one I will be using. After that, you group the parts. You uh, need to right click them and group as a model. Then you select the kill part, which would be in my case the red laser. You rename it to laser. After that, you select the part in the workspace. You click on the plus and you add an attach attachment. I will rename the attachment name to attach kill kill because it will because it will be the laser laser attachment. Now I want to duplicate the laser, I mean the attachment, and you put it under the other part. Now you take the at the attachment position which is the option right here, position in the word C frame, you copy it, and then you put it on the second attachment. So now these two, wait, this, this attachment and this attachment is at the, at the same position. I will rename that one to attach part since it's under the part. After that, you want to add a cylindrical constraint, which is that thing. Now you select it, you put the attachment zero at attack part, and you take attach attachment one to attach kill. Now, you could, wait, can you see, no. Okay, so now you need to turn on angular limit enable. You need to put that to two. Where is it? Wait. Yes, it's this one. Okay. So after that, you went to to turn to two limits enable, which is uh, under slider, you put the upper limit to zero. So to place the laser, it should be all the way at this at this position. Oh, you want to put, make sure the laser in that is not anchor, and you also want to, to make sure that the part is anchor. I think I did something wrong. Yeah, I did something wrong. Uh, turn off angular limits enable and actually change angular actuator type to matter. Now you should be able to see that there is an arrow. It should be red or blue, but this probably should be blue, like mine. This is the rotation 
the part will go into. Make sure you will need to put the max torque at like uh, let's say 60 and angular velocity 60. Oh, I like 50 by 60. Now the part should be able to rotate that way. Now let's test a studio. It's not loading. Uh, I will need to use an gammon or quick. Because I have a spawn of it there and my parts are all the way over here, so I need to fly up to them. For some reason, my part doesn't rotate for now. I thought this was going to. Let me just check what I should have done wrong. I'm not sure what I have done wrong. Let's so try maybe to change the attachment. Uh, like instead of putting attachment zero to at attach part, uh, uh, try to put it at attach kill instead. Yes. Okay. So I have it. Like when this. Is you see the outline? This is more like yellow around the, around the laser. And when you select the attack part, it's more green. When you select the cylindrical constraint, you will be able to see like the glow of it. You can more tell it like you can see the red part is yellow and the Normal part is green, and now it should be able to rotate at whatever this angle is. So now, if we try a studio, it should be working better. Now, I need to go back again to test them. Okay, it's not rotating and I really don't know why this time. So I'm just gonna focus on making it uh, turn like the other one at the uh, height. For that you will need to change the attachment orientation which is under word C frame orientation. Try to change them by like 0, zero and 19 degrees. If you look at the cylindrical constraint, this will have changed uh, direction. But this seems to not be the right direction, so I'm going to change it again. Uh, now it seems to have changed direction again, but in the wrong, in the wrong way. And now it should be able to turn on the X side instead. If I'm going to test that again, it should be working. Well, I think it should be. And yes, it's turning, but I think it's going a bit too fast. Oh, and I just found out what was the problem. The part was... The laser was and the part can collide. Which made it collide... Where the... Wait... 
white this part and not and making making it not able to go turning. So now I'm going to turn turn off the can light setting to off. So now it will be able to go to black without stopping. I I'm also going to lower the motor max torque because it's going way too fast. I'm going to lower it to 30. Angular velocity is the of how quickly the speed of it will rise. Like I suggest for a laser like that to put it at the same one as the ma motor max max torque. And for the ma motor max max torque, it will depend. It will make the parts like go at a certain limit. At a maximum limit. Now I'm going to add a script to the laser so it will be able to kill a player when touching. First, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to select the parent of the script, which is the laser part. Now I have it selected, I will, it, I will add an event which is touch. I will connect it to a function. This is the function. Enter, you enter a little parentheses. You want to, be, to write inside it. It is the part that you will have touch. Inside the function, you will need to write an argument, which starts with if. The argument is, is such a is such a part. It will look for a player. Write the part. For test, I need to do game. That player. Uh, I think the symbol is called Kool Aid. That one. And now I want to get the player from the character, which is that. Inside you will write it, the parents, which is the, if it's a character, it will uh, send it to the player to check to here, which is the player. If there is a player, it will return true, which will make the service well, the function go and hold on whatever we write here. Now, after that, you want to do it. The parent finds first child. Humanoid. This will look for the for a humanoid inside the parts. And and then you want to do take damage. This will make the humanoid take damage and write whatever the number you want inside. It will be the number of damage it will take. A normal game humanoid have usually like 100 HP, which is enough to kill one. You there's two ways to do this. To do this, you want to. Let me just hide the. Uh, but the function first, and I will explain it later as work. The first line I write in, this will kill the player immediately, no matter if there is a force field or not. The force field is uh, is a part that you well is like an attribute you get when spawning and that's mostly the only way to get one except if you have been given one by a script so even if you have a force field you will take damage by touching it by touching the laser 
which is not what I'm going to do for now. For now, I'm going to do take damage. This will look if the player have a force field. If it's have a force field, it will not take damage. Now, if we're going to play and test and test that, you will be able to see to see that you will die from touching that if you don't have a force field. Now I have one, so I should not die. Now I doesn't have one, and I will die. Like that. Uh, I think that's all for the script scripting part. And now I will show what uh, what exactly what the cylinder cyl cylindrical constraint do. So when you when you want to do something rotate, like you want to do the wheel of a car, spinning laser, and stuff like that, you really need to put one there. To actually use one, you will need attachment and the parts you want to put them. Like, example for the laser, you will need to put one, and for the part two. But the attachment need to be at the exact same position for both of them. Inside the cylindrical constraint, there are pro property that's the angular velocity, uh, matter max sort. Before that, you will need to change the angular at your type to matter, and by default, it's none, I think. Uh, the limits the lower limits will be like how low it can get because if it's put if the lower if the lower limit is lower than one, well, no. Example: If you will put this number to like this number, it will drop down to whatever to. Alright, I just changed the number. It will drop down by. Wait, will it drop? Yeah, it should drop down by. This amount, 34 stud, maximum. But if it's zero, it will stay at the same place, except if the upper limit is another number, like 43 stud, which will make the part go at maximum 40, 43 stud up in the air, which is not what we want in that case, which is zero. You will get the, you will get the limit setting if you put limit enable on. If it's off, you will not show, there will be no limits and the part will be free to go anywhere it's went. Uh, yes, I think that's all for this video. I hope you enjoy and please like and subscribe. Good night, day or afternoon depending on your time zone.